you know, hey, why do I pay every month for this cell phone when I can't get a hold of anybody on it? You know, so there's there's a lot of that that uh, that certainly goes on, and you know, some of that is the uh, you know certainly the appeal transitions to two way radios when you start to talk about I know I can key this up, and I know I'm getting out, I'm getting a a connect tone and confirmation that my audio is going out to you. Why are you not responding? Welcome to the Wireless Communications Explained podcast, where IT, engineering, and operations professionals learn about wireless communications. This includes how to develop true dispatch communications, implement and manage communication tools, improve one-to-many communication, keep up to date with security and customer satisfaction trends, increase coverage and range, and roll out push-to-talk technology. Now, here are your hosts, Chaz Elliott of EMCI Wireless and Mike Humphreys of Consult Consulting Solutions. Welcome to Wireless Communications Explained. In this episode, we're going to be talking all about how to compare two-way radios versus cellular and smartphone communication. In this episode, you're going to hear from Chaz Elliott, who's president of EMCI Wireless Communications and a Motorola manufacturer's rep, as well as Mike Humphreys, who is president of Consult Consulting Solutions. Welcome to the podcast, Chaz and Mike. Thanks. Thank you. So we're going to be talking today all about the differences between two-way communications and cellular and smartphone communications, because we've talked about this quite a few times, and it seems this is a really big question that you get out there in the field when you talk to clients. So Chaz, can you kick us off by telling us a little bit about how you answer that most basic of basic questions that you hear often from prospects and from customers from clients out in the field. What actually is the big difference between two-way radios and, and cell phones or smartphones? Sure. So, I mean, it, it comes to uh, a number of things. I mean, from a economical aspect, you know, some folks look at, you know, two-way radios being more of a, a capital purchase. Uh, you know, you're, you're looking at a, you know, one-time buy type scenario and it lasts for, you know, seven to 10 years or, you know, whatever period that you, you need there. And then um, from a cellular aspect, they look at, you know, the, the, the operational expense. It's not not so much capital. They're looking at, you know, an operational expense, uh, you know, $50 a month, a device or, you know, whatever that had, what have you. But from a technology perspective, um, you know, we, we basically, you know, help consult with our customers to understand um, the cellular devices, uh, you know, when they're most appropriate and, you know, when it's most appropriate to look at a two-way radio device for you know, safety, security, and a number of other reasons. Does that concern over capital expenditures versus operating expenses come up quite often with IT, or does that only tend to come up more when finance gets looped in? A little bit of both. Um, some IT folks are used to the, you know, the service, uh, um, you know, software as a service type models, the SaaS models, uh, that's more and more popular you know, when you look at software. So a lot of people, you know, get there in the mindset of, you know, hey, can I pay X amount of dollars a month and then, you know, have a, you know, a hardware refresh and software enhancements and all these kind of things, you know, in, in year three or year five and, you know, a number of different scenarios. So um, it comes up in both scenarios. IT folks um, you know, keep that in their mind just because they're used to the SaaS model. And then, you know, when it comes to an economical, you know, uh, perspective, when finance is looking at it, a lot of times they're trying to figure out, does this fit in my capital budget or would I rather do an operational expense and just, you know, plan for that, uh, you know, every month. Cool. Um, Mike, how about from your perspective, when people are asking you about the differences between two-way radios and, and smartphones or cell phones, how do you typically answer the conversation? I think it comes down to, to looking at the right tool for the job. It, it almost always depends specifically on what the application is and what they're trying to accomplish long term. I mean, if we're all really doing what we're supposed to do as salespeople, and that's be consultative with the client, then we're asking all the right questions and we're going to be able to fit the right solution into that particular application because it's the assumption is oftentimes that you know the individual may think they know what the right solution is. They may think they need a smartphone or a cell phone, or they may think they need a radio. But when you really start peeling it back and looking at it, you you get to the to the the true need that they have and come up with the right tool for that particular job. And that, I think that's the the basis of all of it, honestly. Is getting people away from self-diagnosing. Yep. Yes. 
and making them aware and, and educating them as to what's out there and the pros and cons of, of any solution that they may, they may choose. So another thing this brings to mind coming at this from an, a little more of a non-technical perspective is, are these really the two-way radios just walkie-talkies or are the devices evolved significantly from what people would perceive as something that's a, a grown-up version of what they would see the kids running around and playing with? I think you got to go back to figure out what the definition of walkie talkie was when it was invented. And I think most people aren't probably old enough to know this, but uh, if you go back to old movies about world war II, um and you see that guy running around with that big pack on his back and that large antenna sticking up um, when Motorola in, uh, first came out with the, the product, it was called a walkie talkie because the individual could actually walk and talk on the radio at the same time. Um, and that progressed after that to a handy talkie, which is one that you actually held in your hand and talked on. Um, so that terminology became uh, kind of ubiquitous, right? It became what everybody talked about was a walkie talkie was all things two way radio, I think. And that, that uh, was kind of the perception for a long, still is. And we've talked about from time to time, kind of that hybrid model that existed years ago with Nextel and people were kind of blurring the line between cell and and push the talk? Is that something people still talk much about or is that relegated more towards a, a business model that didn't quite click? I think, I mean, certainly people in uh, a quick, <laughs> you know, I just wished I could go back to the old days with, with Nextel, it was so simple, right? We just beep beep and, you know, uh, whether you were interrupting somebody who was in the grocery store and you were hearing the chirp, you know, and listening to somebody else's conversation or not, uh, you know that, that that conversation still happens. We we still hear from a number of folks who are who are looking for that. And and the truth is, I mean, today we have LTE based, you know, two way radios. Uh, so at the end of the day, I mean, there is a convergence of those technologies that that is available in the marketplace. Do you think the product design ended up trying to more proactively, more deliberately replicate what people felt they were missing when that went away? Is that what the uh, LTE technology was looking to go for. Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, people like the fact that, you know, whether you were uh, in Florida or in Chicago or, you know, one person in Florida and one person in Chicago, you could talk back and forth, you know, with the simple push of a, you know, push of a button. And it's the same way, you know, in this scenario. And as you start to see, you know, across the, the country, you start to see more and more consolidation of, of, you know, centers. Basically, we have a number of customers that, you know, have, uh, operations throughout the United States, and they may have one dispatch center, if you will, that's consolidated in a large, you know, uh, metropolitan area, and they want to be able to talk all over the country. And so we have to be able to facilitate that need. And I really think that's where the product design came from. That makes a lot of sense. So one of the things I'm curious about is when I pick up my smartphone, I don't have to worry about whether I'm calling an Android smartphone or an iPhone or some edge case or a landline phone or a VoIP phone, it just works. What about when you're using two-way radios? Is that something that we need to be concerned about? Yeah, I think, I mean, overall there's uh, different types of, you know, systems, um, but as long as the, the programming parameters are, are configured appropriately and you have, you know, the correct tool for the job, as Mike would say, um, you know, there shouldn't be any, uh, it should be as, as seamless as, you know, being able to talk from your iPhone to your Android device. Um, you just got to have the, the right tools with the right information inside of them. I think it's also a situation where um, that ease of operation and, and seamlessness across any type of device on cellular is certainly a, a big plus uh, when that's, that's the kind of communication that you need. I think on the other side, having that very well-defined communication group or individuals within a group that you communicate with, and that is exclusively who you talk to, is one of the benefits of, uh, of a two-way system as well. And again, it just depends on what you need. Yeah, and I think, you know, when you start looking at a one-to-many conversation, right, that's where the uh, two-way radio really starts to excel. Um, if you're doing a one-to-one -one conversation, sure, a cell phone will, you know, will accomplish a lot of that. But um, you and I know, you know, it would be no big deal to maybe have a three-way call on our cellular phones, but if we decided that we want to introduce a fourth person, the, you know, the whole process really breaks down there. So there's, you know, you've got to look at it from that standpoint as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, that actually brings another thought that I have in terms of 
IT departments dealing with mergers, dealing with acquisitions. And I know when you're working from an emergency management perspective, it probably isn't that common when you're working more with corporate or enterprise clients, it probably could be more common. Have you ever had situations where you have two different entities that have significant two-way radio infrastructure investment and there's compatibility issues that have to be bridged? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we we come across that on a daily basis, um, seeing it a lot in the specifically in the healthcare industry um, with the expansions and acquisitions there. Um, but yeah, we we have technologies that can, can you know that can bridge those two systems in many cases. Um, in other cases, there are you know upgrades or enhancements that need to be made in order to you know to facilitate that across multiple campuses. So. When we think about emergency management and being based in Florida, it's something that native Floridians and transplanted Floridians have gotten all too used to. And hopefully this year will be a mild year, but there's been years like 2004, 2005, where there's a lot of storms to contend with. So from the perspective of following a a major storm, a hurricane, What are the considerations for thinking about two-way radios versus cellular communications before, during, and after a major event like that, or thinking through the the full six-month period of Atlantic storm season? It's significant. Um, You know, when you think about the fact that, uh, you know, we we were talking earlier about the number of of cell sites that went down in given hurricanes, uh, and any year that you look at it, it happens continuously. Um, and they're completely off the air and out of service. And in many cases, you talk to first responders in particular, and they'll tell you that they had their, their two-way radio system and that it continued to function fine. And had they not had that, they would have had no, con- no uh, communications at all. And it's not just hurricanes. I mean, you talk about that. I read an article about the wildfires in California and how it took out a number of cell sites and uh, that all of the residents were without communication, but then so were uh, many of the other people that were trying to communicate via cell. So it does have that an Achilles heel there um, when a network goes down and it knocks everybody off the air. So, Chaz, is that something that you've experienced with a lot of EMCI wireless customers in the last five, 10 years where it's, they've had to battle test and actually go through that scenario? Yeah, absolutely. Um, there have been a number of folks who, you know, thought uh, back when, especially back in the day when, you know, Verizon or AT&T or whoever gave away a cell phone for free, right? You sign up for a two-year agreement and you get a device for free and then, you know, um, you pay your, you know, your monthly recurring costs, but that's really about it. Um, now, you know, way back when, when they would, you know, a number of customers went to that technology and we've seen, um, you know, you look at uh, buildings now with cellular antennas you know mounted to the side of condos and apartment buildings and all that kind of stuff the they have battery backups that maybe last two hours or so uh during a power outage but um at the end of the day there's no generator up there there's no propane tank it doesn't have a thousand gallons of fuel like you know a lot of hardened you know two-way radio uh facilities do so when you really start to look at that um you know if the power's out for more than two hours the coverage is gone so it's definitely we've we've experienced that both with our public safety customers and also with our um, with our you know some commercial customers that have gone that route. Just creating awareness around when they're talking about business continuity, hot sites and cloud storage and everything else that would normally be in, in an IT infrastructure Absolutely. conversation, especially this time of year. Especially if you're, you know, in a rural market, right? So if you're, if I'm a cellular carrier and I'm looking at, you know, tower sites and which tower sites am I going to bring up? You know, I have all these outages all across the whole state that were damaged by a hurricane. I'm going to prioritize the metropolitan areas uh, before I'm going to look at a, a rural market. So with, you know, with your own, your own LMR system, you have more control over, you know, repairing things and how that works and, you know, maintenance agreements. So you have priority access and all of these things. Whereas with a cellular carrier, you kind of just sit back and just wait until they get it up and going. Yeah. It's something I know all too well being a flurry and going through storms is from a utilities perspective, when they're getting hammered on the news that there's a half a million people out, a million people out, they're not interested in going to one home in the middle of nowhere and restoring one at a time. They go to a big master plan community where they can bring a thousand homes back up at the same time because 
it looks prioritization of resources from an emergency uh, EOC perspective, but also uh, just looks better from a PR perspective and goodwill mm-hmm. after the uh, after getting mission critical facilities like hospitals back online. So, do you come across many circumstances that uh, prospects customers ever want to talk to you more about when a smartphone or or when cellular may actually be the better choice relative to two way radios? Does that that come up? Sure. Absolutely. And there are times, I mean, there are circumstances certainly where uh, when we're talking about, you know, obviously we're talking about business to business types of applications here or, or uh, business applications, not consumer or not individuals. But um, one example that, that comes to mind immediately would be uh, home builders. They, uh, they have a need to talk to multiple different subcontractors on a given job uh, and suppliers uh, and a two-way radio system would not really wouldn't accomplish that. So they have to have some kind of access that is uh, that, that gives them communications pathways to all these different people and all these different companies and all these different entities. So that's a that that's one example right there when when truly uh, a cell phone or a smartphone would be the better uh, the better choice. Because it's a matter that the subcontractors aren't going to come in and make a significant investment in wireless infrastructure just to work on that particular job site for a couple of days or a couple of weeks and moving they'd end up having to have a half a dozen different devices, right? Yeah. And if you, if you look at a very large construction site where people are going to be on site for two or three or four years, they will get on radio systems that collaborate and talk together. And that's a particular circumstance. But when you're moving around all over the city, having different, different houses going at different locations, different subcontractors in and out, it's not functional to try to put together uh, a two-way radio system that would be, uh, uh, easy enough for everybody to implement and use. So typically cell phones would be the answer there. Yeah, I think about even in our area in uh, Palm Beach County, seeing all the residential build outs over the last five or 10 years, and you do tend to see the plumbing companies, the electrical companies that work for a half a dozen different builders. So they may have a crew that's on three, four, five different job sites over the course of a day or over the course of the week. And uh, yeah, the scenario of having to have three or four or five different bills and devices of worrying about people getting broken, lost, all that stuff would be yeah, really unwieldy. Mm-hmm. So when people come to you and they're looking at applications um, where, so we talked about where a two-way radio is, is best. We talked about where, where cellular is best. What's the common use case in a commercial application where they're using both side by side, where there's heavy usage of, cellular and smartphone at the same time that there's two-way radio communication. I think Mike's scenario that he just used construction in some cases, uh, if we're looking at a, a big on-site operation um, and they've, they have, you know, hundred employees on site, they need to be able to commu- communicate on site with those employees. But at the same time, maybe the, you know, the foreman of that site or, or what have you needs to be able to communicate with his suppliers to get more windows or doors or, you know, whatever it is uh, ordered. Um, being able to you know call them on the on a, on a cell phone, I think makes it you know makes that very convenient there. But also being able to talk to all of your staff with a one to many conversation uh, on the two way radio, um, you know, to certainly you know in that sense it makes in that application it makes sense to have both uh, products. Is it the third device that's really the tipping point on all of it, where someone has a personal smartphone, they have a, a phone from work, and then they also have a two-way radios that, or are people generally comfortable doing that if they need to? Yeah, it depends. I mean, we've seen some people that carry three devices and, you know, some people that I think, you know, there are some people that have a work cell phone, you know, and then they have, you know, a two-way radio, but on their work cell phone, they end up downloading Facebook or you know, excuse me, I'm calling in to, you know, calling a family member or what have, what have you. And, you know, then the boss is trying to get a hold of the employee and they can't because they're on the phone and the boss is going, you know, hey, why do I pay every month for this cell phone when I can't get a hold of anybody on it? You know, so there's there's a lot of that that, uh, that certainly goes on. And, you know, some of that is the, uh, you know, certainly the appeal transitions to two-way radios when you start to talk about, I know I can key this up and I know I'm getting out, I'm getting a a connect tone and confirmation that my audio is going out to you. Why are you not responding? And I think that's one of the things we always talk about is that, that the two way radio side of it is, is 100% a business tool and a business tool only cannot be used for anything else. Whereas a, a smartphone or a cell phone um, because of everything else that it's capable of doing, 
that just by virtue of all of that, it's not just a business tool and you cannot control how your employees may or may not be using that device, whether you've given it to them or whether they use their own. Um, and I know that I had talked to, to a, uh, a heating and air conditioning contractor uh, not that many not that many months ago. And he was talking about the fact that what Chaz mentioned, that he was so frustrated. He constantly got voicemail every time he tried to call one of his, his field technicians um, and he couldn't get through to them or they just wouldn't answer. He wasn't sure what was going on. So he wanted to go back to a two-way radio system. And interestingly enough, one of the better solutions now combines both because you now have a true two-way radio that works on the cellular network um, as a two-way radio. Um, so you still have the benefits of all the wide area coverage, but you've got the durability and the functionality of a two-way radio. So now the, the lines are really getting blurred out there. So, Do you see a big demand in the market for that continued convergence of collapsing two devices into one? You bet, absolutely. So the final area I wanted to talk to you about today when it comes to comparing two-way radios to cellular and um, cellular smartphone communications is in this context, what's the biggest misconception that people have about what two-way radios are capable of, what they're not uh, uh, able to do, and in, in general, what do you feel is the biggest myth, urban legend that's out there? Yeah, I think overall it's that two-way radios are a, a thing of the past. You know, it's basic voice, but you can't really do anything else. Uh, we're certainly to to the point now that this is 2021 with a two-way radio, you can have everything from enterprise grade, you know, Android applications to a built-in scanner, to a built-in camera, being able to stream, you know, security camera video feeds to your two-way radio device, all of that, um, this convergence of all of those technologies into a single device so that your users are not having to carry multiple devices and you're not having to pay for a two-way radio and a cell phone for each one of your staff members. I think there's a situation also where people forget um, some of the largest value propositions of, of a two-way radio. And, and the first one that we always talk about is instantaneous, single push-to-talk communication. You don't have to look at a screen. You don't have to look up a number. You don't have to give a voice command to ask for the the phone to, to dial somebody, you just push a button and start talking without ever taking your eyes off the road, without ever taking your eyes off of the work that you're doing, without whatever the case may be. And that in and of itself probably carries as much value as anything when you talk about the difference between these two technologies. And it's critical in business, absolutely critical. Do you see a lot of people doing hands-free two-way radios for that reason? Or are they still largely using a push to talk? Yeah, we actually, um, because of the, the mobile radio that you would mount, like in a vehicle, for example, is classified as hands-free because it's fixed mounted to the, the vehicle. So it um, abides by all of the hands-free regulations and rules. And we even have the ability to do push to talk buttons on a steering wheel, for example. Um, with a visor microphone so that the user never even has to you know, reach down and grab a microphone or do anything out of the norm. They keep their hands on the wheel, they push the button to push to talk, and they're able to, you know, their audio transmits. Um, and we have the ability to do the same thing with hands-free on, you know, handheld radios as well. We have Bluetooth technology that allows for a you know, whole myriad of uh, Bluetooth audio accessories. So it sounds like big picture If somebody worked with two way radios 10 or 15 years ago, they left that particular job role and they're coming back now and they may be totally oblivious to all the advances in technology in the last 10 years and it's time to, get, time to get an update. Absolutely. That's terrific. Um, Chaz, Mike, what's the best way for someone to learn more about the great work that you do at EMCI Wireless and two way radios? You can find us online, uh, www.emciwireless.com. And we also have a website for our um, wide area push to talk solution, www.pttanywhere.com. That is terrific. Well, it's been great talking with you today to learn more about the differences between two-way radios and cell phone, smartphone communication. You've been listening to Chaz Elliott from EMCI Wireless and Mike Humphreys from Consult Consulting Solutions. Thanks so much. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you, Joshua. 
Thanks for listening to this episode of Wireless Communications Explained podcast. To get notified about new episodes, subscribe at wirelesscommunicationsexplained.com or wherever you like to consume podcast episodes, including Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and YouTube. And if you found this episode helpful, please leave us a five-star rating and tell your friends. Music